All right, so in your hobby kit, you're gonna have knives, you're gonna have paint brushes, you're gonna have files, but there is an unsung hero to hobbying and I feel that we really should cover it. So let's talk about paint handles. Welcome back to All About The Geek. I'm your host, Jason Isaac, the Tyrant Director, and on this channel, we do tips and tricks, how-tos, and reviews of all things that I'm passionate about, primarily tabletop and technology, although occasionally we will look at things that are food and travel related. Today, we're gonna to be looking at hobby handles, which I feel are some of the unsung heroes of the hobby world. Everyone has a great knife. Everyone has their files and their favorite paint brushes. But over the last couple of years, I've really come to appreciate the use of the handle. And I honestly am late to the game. I didn't start using one until GW released theirs. But I wanna talk about all of the handles that are available. And we're also gonna take a look at how to make some of your own. All right, so let's take a look at some hobby handles here. Over here, what we've got is a selection of the GW standard hobby handle. And this is the one that got me even recognizing that having some sort of paint handle was an important aspect. The key concepts here is that something that's going to grip the miniature so you don't have to hold onto the base or onto the miniature itself, as well as giving you the opportunity to bring that model up off of the table a little bit when you're bracing your hands against the table. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, I have here three of the Go Faster red ones, seven of the standard black ones, one of the jumbo extra large ones, and the one over there with the lovely set of grippy arms. I've also brought myself into the uh, spray paint ones, um, which are great for priming. Honestly, I think these are one of the best gadgety gizmos that Games Workshop has come up with. Although there are other options. And that's one of the big things here is that this investment represents about $150 worth of GW plastic. And honestly, you can get by with a lot cheaper. Now, I'm gonna do it with the plastic and I've bought into the GW because at the end of the day, I'm lazy and I won't always do the thing. And beside my primer one here, you can see this ruler that's got some square spots on it. So what that actually is, is double-sided tape where I tape down some uh, Warhammer Fantasy models for priming them because that's easier than making what I will demonstrate in just a second here. So what I've got in behind these is some examples of what I consider to be an option that's similar to the hobby handle that you can buy commercially. So the big thing here is that it is based off of a pop bottle. So I'm just gonna grab this one here. So this is just a spool of thread with the top of a pop bottle. Like it's even still got the plastic ring on it because I haven't done anything. And I've just glued it on here. So the basic premise is you're gonna cut the top off. Then you're going to file or sand it down. And then with hot glue, you're gonna attach it to the spool. Once you've got that done, you can see here that I knocked over. I've got this Griffin model that it's just got a pop cap, pop bottle cap that I've hot glued onto the bottom here. So when I need to do, uh, get ready, I can just literally screw it on here and I'm good to go. Just as good and cheaper. Ultimately you're figuring you could buy a spool of thread for a buck, even if you don't need the thread, you're gonna drink the pop anyway. Um, it's just the hot glue that really you're out. Now, the other one that this is very similar, as I said, to the hobby handle and it works quite well, but I see no reason why you couldn't take it a step further. And that's exactly what I did here. So here, what I've got is the same pop bottle tops, uh, maybe a little less sanding, as you can see, they're a little, they're at a, at a jaunty angle. Let's call it a jaunty angle. And again, I can just screw on the Griffin. It's hard to do with a camera between me and the thing there, but there we go. 
the griffin screwed on and now if it wasn't already primed I could go ahead and prime that all day it's not going anywhere right quite secure so if you don't want to spend the $25 for this one for the cost of a $3 ruler the tops off of the pop bottles you're probably already drinking from you can build your own alternative now again I like these because they require a lot less work and ultimately the disposable part which is the rubber bands here that hold everything together um, those are pretty cheap to replace not that the hot glue is but the uh, the concept of having to glue and detach the models all the time can be a little bit daunting or it's just an extra step I don't want to do so this is for the lazy person this is for the person who's a bit more frugal with their money all of them are op valid but I would highly recommend it so now let's take a quick look at that thing I was talking about about bracing your hands and working on a miniature so I talked about bracing your hands in the description of why I thought hobby handles were important or paint handles were important and really what I'm talking about is when you're working on a miniature and you pull it up to your face and you want to work on aspects of it I know I'm just fake brushing right now um, even if I'm not going to brace against the desk giving me the handle as something else to hold on to is really a nice bonus I can just rest my hand against it and just use my fingers and ultimately everything is moving together now where it really comes into play is if I'm working on a tabletop like this because now I can rest my hands on the table and I can even put the base right on the table itself and now it's even more stable and I've got all the stability and nothing moves except for my brush just my fingers and it's a lot better than the alternative which is doing nothing or in this particular case especially with this tiny little base I'd hold on to this and now because I'm not bracing my hand or my fingers that are holding this against the desk it's relying on my hand which because I'm trying to be gentle it's of course going to be twitchy and it's shaking you can see my thumb is shaking a little bit there maybe you can't but I definitely notice it so that's an issue now if we look at the DIY one let's get that griffin over here we get the exact same benefit that we did with the GW model I can still brace this model right here and I can still work on it and even if I want to work on it up close I can still get that bracing and I've got a firm grip on the model itself it's safe and I can just carry on doing my thing no big deal all right so realistically if that doesn't convince you that hobby handles and paint handles are an important aspect whether you're talking about the mass manufactured games workshop ones or the do-it-yourself for under a buck ones realistically uh, you just aren't going to use hobby handles and that's just the way it is all right so if this little video didn't convince you to use hobby handles that's fine I really think that they are the unsung hero of the hobby kit now if you did enjoy this and you do think that you're going to be using hobby handles whether you're going to make your own or if you're going to use the games workshop ones or buy the hobby handles that are available online I'm going to be doing a video on how to make a tray to hold five at a time next week and so it's a good idea to subscribe and hit that notification icon down below so that way you will know when that video goes up of course if you follow this channel already you know that all my videos go up Wednesday nights sometimes Thursday morning if the processing takes a little bit longer but until next time remember to work your wonk and keep it geeky